today my M4 is gonna get some serious street cred. We are going to install this red M1 and M2 button on the steering wheel, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver, a smaller flathead screwdriver or like a micro pokey thing if you got it, a small Phillips head screwdriver, and a T20 Torx driver or screwdriver. All of these will be in the description below. Let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is you are going to pop the trunk. Yeah. Then you're gonna walk over here to the passenger side of the trunk and you are gonna pull this trim piece out. What this is gonna do is it's gonna expose your battery I want you to locate your negative terminal, okay? Right here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that you need to undo and then release this terminal. Remember, lefty loosey, and go ahead and back this off. Now that it's loose, you can go ahead and just pull it right off, lay it down there by the side of the battery. Now, a lot of people like to put a towel right here over the trunk latch. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, but also I have very little reason to believe that the trunk would close on my car because it's on a flat surface. Um, but even for extra insurance, I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of the back seat fold downs just so that if a ghost comes by and I need to fold it down and crawl out of the trunk and release it, I can do so. Okay, the next step is I want you to become oriented with the steering wheel in some areas that we're gonna use consistently throughout this process, all right? Of course, we have our paddles that are nine and three o'clock. What I want you to do is come under here and I want you to feel for about eight and four o'clock and you're gonna feel some indentations there. That is gonna be our airbag release and we're gonna use those here in just a moment. Now, at your six o'clock, you're also gonna feel that there's also an indentation behind this trim and we're also gonna use that later on to be able to remove this center piece. Okay, so I want you to take your flathead screwdriver and I want you to find that hole on the side for the airbag release. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna feel around and you're gonna feel something like a spring. Then I want you to push on it and pull just one side of the airbag up, okay? And you're gonna notice that it kind of releases a little bit. Then I want you to switch hands and I want you to keep holding and you're gonna find that other side and you're gonna do the exact same thing. A little finagling there, you'll find that little spring button and then you are going to push on it and pull. Let me take a little bit of searching. Oh, come on now. And there you go. And then you will have your airbag actually released. Now, what you're gonna do is I want you to see this, is there's gonna be a prong here for uh, you to disconnect this connector. You're gonna push down and pull out, there you go. Now you have your airbag released and I want you to just take this and set it aside in a safe place. Like that. The next step in the process, we wanna remove this center trim piece. Now to do that, there's gonna be three torque screws. We have one here at the nine o'clock position, one at the three o'clock position, and then another one here at that six o'clock position that we talked about earlier. All right, so just have at it. I love this thing, this dual drive screwdriver I got on sale at Lowe's one day. Now take your pieces and make sure you hold on to all of these, okay? You don't wanna lose this stuff. So I usually just drop it in a cup holder. Get this one. Come on now. This one's a little tighter. We'll just pull this guy right out. We're gonna set it down. And then we're gonna move on to this back one here. I'm just gonna feel for it. All right, there we go. It's nice and seated. And we'll just do the same. Go ahead and just pull it right on out. And once it's come all the way out, go ahead and pull this trim piece right off. Now I just dropped that screw. So as soon as I get this pulled off, I'm gonna pick it up and make sure I hold on to it, okay? Now we have this trim piece removed and you're gonna wanna just take this and set it off in a nice safe space, which is like right here. Found it, don't lose this one. So if you have a DCT car, the next thing you wanna do is you're gonna need to remove the left side paddle from the steering wheel. And to do that, you're also gonna remove this screw here and it's gonna release it. Get in here with your trusty Torx screwdriver and just undo it. And you'll notice it gets loose right away. Take this guy and hold on to it, don't lose it, because then you're gonna have problems. You don't want problems. So take that and put it maybe in your other cup holder so that you know that it goes to this spot. 
And then you're just gonna pull your paddle right off. And what I would do is, I don't even think you need to disconnect it. I would just gently let it hang right there. As you can see, we have our paddle hanging down here and I want you to get a view here of what we're gonna be working with. From back here, there is one last screw we have to release that is gonna allow us to take the actual switch panel off of the steering wheel and replace the buttons. Go ahead and loosen that torque screw here. This one might be a little bit more awkward to remove, but you'll see that the switch panel starts to move around. And go ahead and just get it until it completely backs off. And then, boom. There it goes and releases. Now you have access to the back of the switch panel. Just gently set it to the side here and make sure that you hold on to this screw. Now to gain access to the back side of the switches, we need to remove these three Phillips head screws. And I'm not even gonna disconnect it from the steering wheel. I, I kinda like this little workspace we have here. <clears throat> so take your little Phillips head. This actually happens to be my favorite screwdriver in my entire life. I've had it since about fourth grade from making uh, RC uh, cars and stuff like that. It's a Wea, and this thing has literally followed me everywhere and it is the best screwdriver I've ever owned. And I'm going to take these screws out of the back and I'm gonna put them in a safe spot. I'm also gonna put them in a cup holder uh, just to hold on to them. And these come out very, very easily. They are in plastic, so when we put them back, we don't wanna over tighten them and strip the uh, holes. All right. <clears throat> Pretty simple stuff right there, folks. And then by doing so, we have now given ourselves complete access to the switches. Now, be careful with this. You don't wanna have it fall apart on you. Just set it gently on the steering wheel and let's go on from here. Okay, now that we have the switch panel removed, I wanna point something out. These little white pieces here, they can in fact uh, fall out. Do not lose those under any circumstances or you will then lose function of your rocker switch and your resume button for cruise control. So just try not to lose those. I'm sure it's a real pain to try to find those again. But what we're gonna do now is we are going to remove the uh, M1 and M2 buttons by removing these tabs or pulling these tabs off and pushing the button out at the same time. It's gonna be kind of hard to film, but um, I will try to show you the very best that I can. I'm gonna try to do this as gracefully as possible and also give you the most amount of detail that I can, but basically you're going to pry that little prong backwards, okay? Maybe hold that one down with your finger and then take the other one and do the exact same thing while pushing out and down to release them, boom. Now we have one that just released. That was our M1 button, okay? Go ahead and set that aside. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing on the opposite side. Now see how these things keep moving? Don't lose those like I told you. Okay, and we're gonna take one side, we're gonna pull out and try to release that string. That's that, see, they're kind of tough. There we go, there we go. And then let's get that other side here. Let's get that other side. And boom. All right, kind of hard to film. I, I hope that was somewhat useful for you guys. Now we have that second button pulled out. Go ahead and set that aside. Now that the buttons are out, let's go ahead and put the new ones in. Now to do that, what I want you to do is take a finger, hold down those white little buttons so that they don't fall out, flip this bad boy over, and you should see a naked uh, M button set up here. Then take your new ones, and what you wanna do is just take them and place them in the proper position. So right now I'm placing the M1 button, and I'm gonna just push it in until it clicks. Boom, done. Now we're gonna take the uh, M2 button and do the exact same thing, just push it, place it right where it should go, It'll feel right when it's in the right spots. There we go. And then go ahead and just give it a good push. Click. And now they are installed into the actual button panel. Next thing is you want to take that little circuit board and you want to put it back into place on the switch panel. It is going to fit together and it's going to feel like it fits together. It'll fall right into place. Um, and it's kind of like Legos. Then we're going to take those little screws that we had and we're going to put them back in in the reverse order. Um, again, do not over tighten these screws because they are in a plastic housing and I don't want you to strip them um, because that would be a uh, bad day. So I'm gonna take my favorite screwdriver and I'm gonna just do them just snug. You'll feel when they hit um, and they're just tight enough. That's what you wanna do, boom. And let's get that last one here. All right. 
and then flip it over, take a look at your switch panel here, and I would give it a good test. You know, check the buttons, make sure that they still feel good, make sure that all the buttons function and that your rocker is in good shape, and then uh, you know that you're pretty much good to go. And then we are going to place it back into its little home here where it belongs, and we're gonna add that screw back in on the back side here. Let me go ahead and do that now. Got the screw, and we are going to just tighten it in and make sure that it goes into its little home. Again, be gentle, you're dealing with plastic housings here. You don't wanna over, -screw, over tighten these uh, metal screws and strip the holes. There we go. All right, so now the panel is now installed. Now what we gotta do is we gotta put our uh, DCT paddle back in place. It actually just sits right where it kind of belongs. It'll feel like, you know, again, it's gonna feel very much like Legos. When it fits, it fits. And then we are going to use our um, screw that we removed and we're gonna put it right back into place right here. And go ahead and tighten that bad boy back in. And there we go. It's nice and snug in a good spot here. And then we are going to now install that trim piece with all the same screws that we started with before. Let's go ahead and just put it right where it belongs. It'll just kind of pop right back into place. You shouldn't really have to force it much once it's in the right spot. All right, that little cable was in the way. And there it goes, nice and snug. And then we are going to add our screws again at our nine, three, and six o'clock behind the steering wheel. And then this one's a little bit more difficult. We'll do this bottom one here. I like to do this little method here, put the screw on, kind of guide it in, and then go ahead and just tighten that one in too. All right, so our trim piece is in. Let's pop the airbag in and we are done. Here are a couple things to note. There are two guide pins here that are gonna go into these two holes. And then also you have your connector. Please remember to plug in your connector because I don't want you to forget that. And then I have to go back in here because you have an airbag light or just not put it back in and then you know not have an airbag because uh, I want you guys to kind of live through an accident if it ever happens. So go ahead and plug that right back in at the top there. And then you're gonna just kind of center this, the airbag here and it's gonna sit here. And then what you wanna do is just kind of gently give it a firm push and it'll pop in and it'll feel satisfying and proper. And there you go, you've completely reassembled your steering wheel here. Now the next step is that we just need to go ahead and put the negative terminal back on the battery. So I have now reconnected the negative battery terminal and I am going to give her a start. And we seem to be good to go. We don't have any odd check engine lights or anything like that. I do believe we're going to need to reset the date and time on the car, um, but that shouldn't be a big deal. We'll just go into our iDrive system and uh, go ahead and do that. Now that they're installed, uh, I gotta say, I really like the look of it. it kind of gives it a little bit more of a sporty vibe inside and kind of uh, matches the look of the new M5s that have the M1 and M2 buttons on the top of the steering wheel. Um, overall, great success. I like them. I hope the video was easy to follow along with and uh, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.